Um, the first thing that you and I decided we'd talk about today as we run through some of the news is Fergal Horgan retiring. Like, and he, he's kind of, he's done a bit of a scorched start policy here as well. He's clearly definitely not going to go back, but he's not happy with the way things are. He used terms like it's a farce. He was speaking to Tip Midwest Radio, 100% finished. Uh, the lack of appointments he got in the last few years. Some referees been injured for six weeks, coming back and getting three league games. He got two in total. And he's refereed three All-Ireland finals. So you can see how he'd be, he'd be perturbed, particularly because his refereeing style in terms of letting it go was very, very good. But um, yeah, like, I mean, th this should be very worrying for the GA. It is very worrying. We can't, I, I spoke to Fergal maybe last year or 18 months ago about the refereeing crisis and us not having, you know, enough people going into refereeing and clubs, str clubs struggling to get games paid off because of referees. And now we're letting like one of, if not the best hurling referee, go out the side door, uh, a three-time All-Ireland uh, final, you know, referee as well. He's 44, he's another six years. Like, he's gone. John Keenan's going to be gone at the end of the year because of that age, horrible ageist rule that they have where you can't referee over the age of 50. Um, if you're fit enough to referee, you should be able to stay going to your 60 if you're able to keep passing the fitness test or whatever it is. I think it's absolutely bonkers. Um, it's like telling but, players you have to retire at 32. Why? Yeah, I, I don't get it now. It, uh, it, it really, uh, yeah, it really rankles me now, I have to say. And I'm sure, like, Morris Deegan was forced to retire. He couldn't, he can't referee inter-county this season or, or ever again because of that rule. And you're just thinking, you know, here's another lad that definitely has a few more years to give. So we're in the middle of a refereeing strike, uh, a refereeing crisis, I should say, and we're pushing lads out the door. Like, lads who are, to me, like, and I can, can't get my head around it, and I think this plays into some of the points Fergal has made as well. You know, even John Keenan refereeing the Munster final last year, widely recognised as one of the greatest games of all time, and, net, and not getting another game for the rest of the year is bananas. Um, from Fergal's point of view, you know, I remember thinking it was a bit strange seeing him run, running the line in some big games during the league, and he obviously only got two league games. Um, I kind of heard that there was various bits and pieces going on uh, behind the scenes. And I don't, I don't, by all accounts, he's not the only referee. Uh, and we're probably only learning that over the coming weeks. The only referee, inter county referee, to have stepped aside. But Hurling can't afford to be without the likes of Fergal Horgan. And we're left with a quite a shallow enough pool of referees. When you think of, you know, some of the big referees who have, you know, stepped aside in recent years, Brian Gavin's obviously, you know, gone. Barry Kelly is gone. Uh, James Vergaa is gone, Fergal Horgan is gone. You know, a lot of, you know, and Shane, if we want to have great games, and Hurling is a great game, but if we want to have great games, you do need really good referees to allow the, the game to flow and play, you know, kind of referee things on their instincts a small bit as well. And Fergal was one of the best at that. So uh, I'd put, there's definitely no way back for him anyway. From, from reading the quotes, there is no way back. And that was fairly two-footed at the authorities. Um, but I, like, I've heard a lot of anecdotal stories about referees and how little support they get and how poorly treated they are. And some people, like, there, it is actually more financially lucrative to referee, you know, an under-13 camogie game in Tipperary than it is to referee inter-county games. And that's a fact because, um, you know, their, their, even their rate of mileage is ridiculously poor amidst the current kind of fuel crisis as well and the price the price has just been astronomical as well so they don't uh, they're not on a beano like some people think they are i can tell you that yeah and um i was uh, i was chatting to tommy dunn and shane brophy last week on tipcast and i was saying you know the style of you know some lad had made this kind of quip to me about fergal horgan and his style of letting the play go and all that that you know he'd hang up his whistle there if he could actually find it in the first place but uh you know he he has been an excellent referee um, but here is a little clip of Tommy Dunn talking about it. Obviously, Tommy would know him well enough from the Tipperary Championship. For him to walk away uh, is, a, is a fairly major statement, and particularly at a time when, um, you know, referee recruitment uh, is, is, is very, very challenging, to say the least. Uh, now, you know, this, this isn't a good news story by, by any means. So... Um, you know, I think it would be important that it's taken heed of to, and, you know, to see um, if, you know, I haven't read his comments or, or the details of them, only just, just the headlines. But, um, you, know, you know, I wonder, are there other referees of his calibre that feel, that feel the same way? And if so, why is that? And, you know, is there something going on in the background? 
Um, and clearly for him, he felt that, you know, th things weren't right. And, you know, he, but he was very, it's very sad to lose a referee of that quality, you know, I'd say, because um, it's, it's a very difficult job. And, uh, and he was a really, really good referee that understood the game very well and always, uh, no, he didn't get everything right. No referee ever does that. But, but, but I think his style of refereeing, um, uh, you know, was always conducive to, you know, letting the game go within reason and letting players express themselves and, and allowing the, the physicality to be in the game without, you know, he wasn't a sort of a petty referee, if I could describe it like that. And uh, um, never heard too many fellas having too many bad things to say about him in terms of the inter-county game where he, I thought he always uh, did, you know, had pretty good performance. So it's, re it's very disappointing to see that. And, <laughs> and hopefully there isn't a precedent there, you know. It's interesting you mention his style of refereeing because somebody kind of oh, made yeah, a quick good way. To, uh, I'm going to stop that. that clip there because I'm about to repeat the joke that I just made beforehand, <laughs> which has been cat. Uh, Cassius King says hurling power rankings will be interesting. Uh, Ferg uh, Fergus Butler wonders, will Verney now return the favour and wear a Tipperary jersey? Never. <laughs> really? You wouldn't wear the famous blue and gold? No. How famous not, is that blue and gold? Not, not for all the tea in China. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey K says, uh, we need referees that let the game flow in football and hurling like the referee in the Mayo Ross Common match last week. Um, Pao K says, always thought Fergal was fair, especially with his cards. Never bowed to outside media narratives around players and, and always called a spade a spade. Would he have sent off Hegarty in Ennis last year? No, he wouldn't have had. No, because he... I, to be fair, to Shane, I was just thinking back... You know, you have a lot of incidents when you think of certain referees even throughout their own career. Uh, as good as they were, there were always maybe little, you know, potential mistakes or errors that they made along the way. There's nothing jumping out, I have to say, from Fergus' career where you think he got that completely wrong or anything like that. So, no, I, I don't think he would have sent off Hegarty. I think he would have made up his own mind based on that decision on that given day. He would have got a yellow card, I'd, I'd imagine. And he's yeah. also, I don't remember too many referees Stand corrected on this. I don't remember too many referees refereeing a semi final and final in the same year as he did in the last All Ireland. He also refereed, I think this is gas, he refereed an All Ireland with 80,000 people, he refereed an All Ireland with uh, half the capacity, and he refereed an All Ireland with no capacity. Isn't that mad? It is mad, actually. And that means that the, the pool of referees for the championship has gone from 12 to 11. Now, I don't know if they're going to call somebody up. Um, in the intervening period, but that's that's not helpful. Do you know what? Is there any player out there who played in All Ireland finals when they were sixty minutes, seventy minutes, and eighty minutes? I actually don't have the answer off the top of my head, but I wouldn't like there was different periods. I can't remember the exact dates, but it must have been somewhere around the 60, 50, 60, 70s, that whole era that finals were played at those different times. Eddie Care. Eddie Kerr, maybe? maybe. Yeah, he played in an 80 minute final, to the best of my knowledge. P Well 74 is a great question there. Says, with Harden gone, will Tip have anyone in Croker this year? Good man, P Well. So it in, boy. <laughs> P Well, like you're trying to vex me now. I'm only just back. I've had a couple of weeks off. Come on now. Uh, 